Math 98, we are going to talk about section 10.3, which is the quadratic formula. And the quadratic formula is kind of um, a pinnacle point in an Algebra 1 course. This is a formula that uh, does not go away in your, in your math career. Uh, so let's start with something like this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to solve this by completing the square. So notice what I would do is I would subtract 2 to get it over here. And then uh, I'm going to divide everything by 3. You might divide by the 3 to start with, but that's all right. So I've got x squared plus 7 thirds x equals negative 2 thirds. And then from here I would complete the square. So I take half of the 7 thirds, which is 7 sixths, and I'd square it, which becomes 49 thirty-sixths, and I'd add it to both sides. And then I'd rewrite this as x plus 7, 6 squared equals whatever this is. I'll just do that on my calculator. Negative 2 thirds plus 49 thirty-sixths. Give me the answer as a fraction. 25 thirty-sixths. Oh, that's nice. Cool. So notice I combine those, right? And you could have done that by finding um, a common denominator, right? Which is 36. So I'll multiply this by 12. So that'd be negative 24, 36 plus 49, 36. That's where that 25 came from. That's a 49. Then from here, I would square root both sides, right? And when I square root over here, the plus or minus comes in with it, leaving me this. Square root of 25, 36, I can do that, uh, which is 5 sixths. And then I would subtract this, and I combine those, and I'd be on my way. Now, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to generalize this process that we just did. Right? We did it for specific values, the 3, the 7, and the 2. I'm going to do it specifically for an A, a B, and a C. Here's the reason why I'm doing this. Um, I'm always doing the same big steps over here, right? Like moving that negative two over, dividing by that first value, taking half of this. Like you always do the same steps over here. So what we can do is we can generalize it for this and at the end we'll have a formula that encapsulates all this work. So we do that, subtract C from both sides. And then notice here, over here we divided everything by three. So let's divide everything by A. So we end up with X squared plus B over AX equals negative C over A, right? That was this part right here, um, this part and this part, and then we completed the square. So half of 7 thirds, notice we just doubled the denominator. So I'll do that here. Half of B over A is B over 2A. And if I square that, B squared is B squared, B squared. And um, half of, I'm sorry, 2a squared is 4a squared. And if I added it on the left, i got to add it on the right. So plus b squared over 4a squared. That feels good. Um, notice that like this just became x plus that half part, that 7, 6 squared. So this part will become x plus that b over 2a squared equals... And I can combine some like terms over here. My common denominator is 4a squared. I already have um, an a here. So I could multiply this by 4a over 4a. Right, and I end up with negative 4ac plus b squared over 4a squared. Because they both have that denominator of 4a squared. And I'm just going to change the order. I'm just going to write this as b squared minus 4ac. Okay, then what I did from there is square root both sides. So I'm going to square root this side. I'm going to square root this side, and a plus or minus comes with it. So over here I'm left with that equals plus or minus. Let's see, square root of b squared minus 4ac. I'm just going to leave that as that b squared minus 4ac all over. Square root of 4a squared. Well, square root of 4 is 2. Square root of a squared is a. 
and then I've got one last step. I'm getting so excited. I've got one last step, which is to subtract this b over 2a from both sides. So I get negative b over 2a plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now since those have a common denominator, I can combine them into negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. That's the quadratic formula. Here's what it, what it says. Um, notice we started with this. So if we have this, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, this is true. x is equal to negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Uh, that is great. What's really good about this is this encapsulates all that work. We don't have to do these steps over and over again. They have been um, factored into this equation, like, like they make this equation. So I'm going to add one thing to this. There's our quadratic piece of our quadratic formula. I just want to say what it, what it says in its in entirety, which is if x squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then x equals that. So now this is what we can use. We can use this to solve uh, quadratics. So for example, if I had something like this, uh, 2x squared plus 9x plus 5 equals 0. Well, it's in that form. And notice the a is a 2, the b is a 9, and the c is a negative 5. I can just plug them in, right? So since this is true, x must equal negative b, so negative 9 plus or minus the square root of 9 squared. I'm just going to plug them in for now. It's times 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. And again, uh, notice what I did. I just grabbed the a, b's, and c's, and I just put them in the right spots. So from here, now it's just arithmetic. So negative 9 plus or minus the square root. 9 squared is 81. And notice it's minus 4 times 2 times negative 5. So 4 times 2 is 8 times 5 is 40, and negative times a negative is positive. So this would be plus uh, 40 all over 2 times a. 2 times 2 is 4. Keep doing some arithmetic here. Negative 9 plus or minus the square root. 81 plus 20, what's that, 101? And uh, 101, I don't think I'm going to be able to reduce that down. I think it might be prime. Uh, but anyways, there's my answer. That's what x is equal to. x is equal to those two things. Let's do another one with this quadratic formula. So x squared minus 6x plus 5. Uh, you might see that you could factor that. So factoring is probably an easier, a better choice to do on this for efficiency. But just to, uh, just to show that it works, remember it's negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So in this case, a is 1. b is negative 6. And c is 5. So negative b. So I notice I have a negative negative 6. I'm just going to write it out and then I'll deal with it. So negative negative 6 plus or minus the square root of b squared. b is negative 6. So negative 6 squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right, arithmetic time. Negative negative 6 is 6. Square root of, ne uh, sorry, negative 6 squared is 36. If you're doing it on, the, on your calculator, be super careful. If you go negative 6 squared, you're not going to get the right answer, right? It's negative 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 5 is 20 over all over 2. That whole thing is over 2. So now we've got 6 plus or minus square root of 16. Well, square root of 16 is 4. 6 
plus or minus 4 over 2. Cool, keep going. 6 plus 4 is 10. 10 over 2. 6 minus 4 is 2. 2 over 2. So my answer should be 5 and 1. And you can plug them back into the original equation. Make sure that they work. Check this one out. A is 4. B is negative 5. C is negative 3. Plug them in. Uh, negative B, so negative negative 5. Plus or minus the square root of B squared. Minus 4 times A times C. All over 2 times A. Okay, negative negative 5 is 5. Negative 5 squared is 25. Arithmeticking, uh, negative times a negative is going to be uh, positive. So this will be plus, and let's see, 12 times 4 is 48. So plus 48. And then 2 times 4 is 8. Keep going from here. 5 plus or minus 25 plus 48. What's that? 60, 70, 73? I think that's right. 73. I don't think I can simplify that at all. So these would be my answers. X is them things right there. Two more to give a go to. All right, let's give this one a go. Uh, it looks like A is 3. Whoa. B is 2. And C is 9. So we've got negative B plus or minus the square root of B squared minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. And I'm actually seeing a little trouble on the horizon here inside of this square root. I'm hoping that you see it too. You have to do plus or minus 2 squared is 4. But notice here we have 4 times 3 times 9. Uh, 12 times 9. What's that? 4 minus 108 over 6. And this is going to end up being a negative number. So we're, it's asking us to take the square root of a negative. Not going to happen. So we can say right here, no real solution. Our answer is there is no answer. All right, looking at this one to solve. That should be a plus sign. Looking at this one to solve, uh, x times x plus 6 plus 4. This isn't in the same form that we're used to, but we can get into that form. Let's distribute that x into there. x squared plus 6x plus 4 equals 0. And you know what to do. a is 1. B is 6, C is 4, plug them in, make sure you're not taking the square root of a negative, and you are on your merry way. One last example I want to throw at you. All right, well, first thing about this is it's not in the form A variable squared plus A variable plus number equals 0. So let's subtract 1 12th from both sides. So that's kind of nice. Now, you could go from here. You could say A is 1 fourth, B is negative 1 third, C is negative 1 twelfth. Man, that's going to be ugly to manipulate. Um, let's take advantage of that there's a zero over here. Like what I'm saying is if, if I multiply both sides by the same thing, this is still going to stay a zero. Zero times anything is itself is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look 4, 3, and 12. Uh, these, all these numbers go into 12. So what I can do is I can, I can strategically pick something to multiply both sides by that will make it that all of these fractions are gone in their whole numbers, right? Like 1 fourth times 12 is 3. Uh, 1 third times 12 is 4. 1 twelfth times 12 is 1. And now A is 3, B is negative 4, C is negative 1. And I'm good to go. I'll plug those in and use them. All right, that is the quadratic formula. Give the questions, the exercises in this section a try, and please message me with questions or post them in the forum.